Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be taking a first look at a upcoming game by the folks at Matrix and Slytherin called ICBM. This is a game that I'm playing on uh, October 11th. Uh, there are two days left for you, uh, if you're watching this now, to be able to play exactly what I'm playing right now for free. Uh, it is part of the Steam Game Festival, the Autumn Game Festival, where developers are able to post demos of their game for free for folks to play. It helps showcase games that are in development, it helps showcase developers and whatnot. And this is uh, the game ICBM, the demo for ICBM. And uh, that's what we're going to be taking a first look at today. Now, this game is, uh, I'm told anyway, uh, very similar to a classic game of old called DEFCON, which was a game about sort of nuclear conflict and trying to outlast your adversaries. Uh, my understanding is ICBM is a far more detailed version of DEFCON, uh, at least based off discussions with a couple of fellow YouTubers who have played DEFCON. I never played DEFCON. I do believe I own it in either GOG or Steam or somewhere, but I never actually sat down and played it. Uh, but I have played ICBM a little bit. I did a, a two-hour live stream the other night on my Twitch channel with a couple of fellow YouTubers, uh, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, but I'm going to be doing my first impressions video here today uh, because I think that the multiplayer was just me mostly stumbling around and not what I'm knowing what I'm doing. Now, the demo sort of has two key game modes that you can play. You can go through the eight tutorials. It's pretty short, but I think it gives you a basic understanding of the mechanics and, and some of the ways or different unit types that you interact with in the game. And then there's a multiplayer. There's no like core gameplay campaign or anything like that. Uh, I'm assuming that will be a feature. Well, it is a feature that'll be unlocked with the full game when that comes out. I'm not sure all the different things that'll be included in that, uh, but you can play multiplayer as part of this demo. Now, you may say, multiplayer? You know, I just want to play by myself. Well, you can do that. So if we go in here and we create a new game, that's what we're going to jump into. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to set up a multiplayer game uh, where we are playing as uh, one of the countries. So I guess what we'll do is uh, we'll play as North America or continents, I should say. And then we will have the rest of these uh, these units or whatnot played by the CPU. So it'll be us versus the AI, uh, and the AI will be playing as all the other uh, continents and, and whatnot. So you aren't one nation, like you're not playing as the US, you're not playing as the Soviet Union, you're playing essentially, well, I guess the CPU is sort of like the Soviet Union because you're playing as Russia, but um, you're mostly playing as continents with the exception of, I guess, with the exception of uh, Russia, which, which gets its own its own country. So there's the North America, South America, there's then Europe, Russia, uh, Africa, West Asia, uh, and uh, Pacifica, so the Pacific Islands. Um, did I forget anything? Yeah, I think that's, that's it. Uh, East Asia, yeah. So those are all the countries. It is possible to have alliances in this game. It is also possible uh, you get sort of a default uh, grouping of units and whatnot that you can use uh, and deploy initially, but uh, we're just gonna go with sort of the stock of everything. Uh, so uh, contamination speed is sort of how quickly radiation spreads throughout the world, and that's important in terms of how the game ends. Uh, we're not gonna start in any alliances. Uh, the scoring mode will be default. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and, uh, and jump in here. Um, oh, you can also apparently change the map. So you might have more map options uh, when you actually have the, the full game. Okay, so we are into the gameplay map. You can see this is just a map of the world, pretty pretty basic. You've got a bunch of cities that are located in all of the different spots in the different continents. Each city has a population that is sort of gradually destroyed through nuclear strikes, uh, and uh, different places uh, have different impacts on the economy and sort of your own nation's ability to continue to produce research and uh, new equipment. There's a couple of uh, UI things to call out here. Uh, first off, the globe view, there's two different globe views. There's sort of the static 2D map type deal, just sort of like a, a typical wall map type option. You can also click globe view, and then you can view the world as a, a sphere, as a global sphere, which is actually really useful. Like when the US is, or when the North Americans are nuking Russia, you go over the poles, for example. Uh, you don't control the routes that your weapons take, but it is, uh, I think, more engrossing to see uh, the, the global view of, of how those things play out. So 
just something worth calling out. Um, there's buttons here around radar coverage, territory overview, territory overview, you obviously have sort of an outline of your territory. We're the blue here. So we're North America. You can see our territorial boundaries. You can see South America's territorial boundaries, etc. There's an option to have diplomacy and have alliances. Uh, we're not going to do that. But one thing that's worth calling out is alliances allow you to share research. So as you as you sort of work through things and research different technologies, if you're allied to someone else, uh, my understanding is you share your research with those other countries or those other continents. Um, there's also radar coverage, which doesn't really, you know, there's a whole bunch of options here in terms of missile detection, long wave radar, short wave radar, sonars, space radars, SAM ranges, all of this information. Uh, we'll look at that a little bit later. Uh, that's more relevant once you start deploying items. Uh, and then there's sort of a construction science espionage. This is really the core of the early game, uh, but we'll jump into that in a moment here. So first things first, uh, we have three radar sites that we can deploy right away. We have a submarine, three destroyers, a carrier, and an airbase. Um, so we're going to deploy our radars to the south right now. We're going to try and get a, a good view on South America, since they're the ones that are sort of more, most closely bordering us in the south. And then we'll also deploy one of our radar sites in Russia, or sorry, not in Russia, in Alaska, uh, kind of looking into into Russia here uh, to see if we can't get some visuals on on what might be inside the enemy territory with our sort of radar sets. So you can see when we put the radars on there, you get a nice little circular overview that reflects where the radar can see. Now it's important to defend these locations because you just go to war with folks in a conventional sense as soon as your units come into contact. So as soon as an enemy uh, you know, unit is within range of this radar, it will start shooting at the radar with conventional weapons. Uh, it won't start shooting nukes right away, but essentially everybody's at war with everybody. This is very much like a co-op game. Uh, it's very much a multiplayer game, um, but it's going to be, I think, I think the single player will be a lot of fun too, depending on how they build out the single player campaign or missions or however that works. I have no idea what that's going to look like, uh, but I think it'll be interesting. So one of the things I'm going to do first is I'm going to deploy a submarine. Uh, I think actually I should deploy my carriers to uh, the Gulf, uh, or my carrier to the Gulf, uh, to get a better view of like what's going on down here in South uh, America, while also giving my radar sites in the Gulf a little bit of a defense here, giving a defense to the Gulf cities here. Uh, the It's worth calling out that uh, the... the um, the closer your cities are to the border, really the more vulnerable they are. So, you know, enemy the enemy can bring like SSBNs right off the US coast and even though your SAM sites when you develop anti-ballistic missile weapon technology can intercept incoming weapons, uh, if it's if they're really close in, you may have a lot less reaction time to knock those down. So in my multiplayer game, my Gulf cities and my East Coast cities got hammered real hard, while the inner cities, uh, you know, in, in the interior were much safer based on my SAM belts. So the carriers will have uh, will have ten strike planes and ten fighters. The strike planes can carry conventional bombs. They can also carry nuclear bombs. The fighters just carry sort of weapons air-to-air -air missiles uh, that can help defend the southern coast uh, from enemy conventional strikes or also help defend my radar from like enemy ships uh, and the submarine's going to be on the east coast to try and defend against enemy uh, boomers that might come off the east coast i'm going to put my air base up north uh, to defend our radar site up here uh, so we'll have one um, air base in alaska that will come with five strategic bombers which can both carry conventional and nuclear weapons. It can carry megaton bombs or just regular nuclear weapons. We start with 10 nuclear weapons. Uh, we also have 15 fighter aircraft that can be that will automatically scramble. So if enemy bombers come into our range, our fighters will automatically scramble to defend them. So uh, something worth calling out is that your, your units can, will conventionally respond without your activity. You don't have to, whoops, you don't have to do anything uh, to order your units to do anything. Your, your forces essentially react on their own. You can give them commands like don't engage. So like I could tell my, my carriers to, um, well, what's a, what's a good example here? My airbase, I could tell them, I think there's an option to not attack or something like that. Um, you can also allow air patrols. But I guess there, there's options for like SAMs to not shoot or not engage, but in any event. So this is our basic deployment going on right now. Uh, so we're currently, the game is paused. Um, first things first here, what we're going to do here, and by the way, these different 
uh, items mean different things. So like missile detection, I guess that's not any of those circles. Long ra wave radars here on our uh, on our radar sets here go further out. Short wave is you know obviously much closer in. Uh, there's also sonars here, which are the, the, the yellow area around our sub and around our destroyers. Uh, there's satellite paths, but we don't have any satellites yet. Um, SAM ranges, we don't have any SAMs yet. We don't have any MRBMs, ICBMs, or anything like that. So, yeah. So I think that's that. Uh, do we have a missile detection range? No. So anyway, let's go into uh, construction science and espionage. So right now, every country sort of has a budget based on their economy, and I think all the countries sort of are the same, but uh, at least to start, I think it's just sort of a default. Again, it's a competitive game. Um, but the um, right now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch my budget to 80% science, 20% construction. So I will w be very heavily focusing on research and not so much on building things, um, as opposed to, you know, you could, you could change the slider back the other way. We are gonna line a couple of construction items up for, for building. Um, Actually, first thing let's do is research because I don't know that I can build a whole lot yet. So you can see this is the research tree. Uh, there's a whole bunch of items for you to actually research in this game. And it gives you the amount of time in terms of real time, I believe, that it's going to take to research each one of these units. Uh, now, if you change your science allocation, that will change the times to develop each one of these items. So that's worth calling out. Also, you do have to research things in a tree. So when it says advanced optics are 18, uh, 18 minutes and 20 seconds, that's actually counting the fact that we're going to, if you have to research satellites first. So you'd go satellite, advanced optics, laser space weapons. If we were to do satellite, then advanced optics, then laser space weapons at our current research budget, it would be 37.54 to get to laser space weapons. So it's not 18 minutes just for advanced optics. It's 12 for satellite, 18 for advanced optics. Again, that's my understanding of how it works. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to go ahead and research SAMs, uh, anti-aircraft missiles, to protect our borders. That's something I wanna start producing en masse uh, really quickly. So that's gonna take a little bit of time. It's gonna take nine minutes actually. So actually I'm gonna change this up to 90% uh, because, or maybe we should even just do 100. I don't even know if there's anything I can build right now. I don't have a, oh yeah, I do have items over here. So construction items, meanwhile, show up on the right side. So right now we can build air bases and we can build radars. That's, we can also build carriers, submarines, destroyers, and cruisers. Uh, carriers have those air wings that we talked about. There's no anti-missile defense, however. They're obviously very expensive. They take 58 minutes. Well, granted, that's with our budget, 90% science, 10% construction. But 58 minutes to produce. Uh, they're vulnerable to submarines. Uh, but they also do have the ability to carry air-launched ballistic missiles from your bombers and nuclear bombs. So they're a nuclear strike platform. A submarine is just an attack submarine. It's not a boomer, so it's really just uh, sort of an anti-shipping uh, tool at the moment. Uh, the destroyer has the ability, it's cheap, it has anti-aircraft and anti-missile weapon technology, and it can also sink enemy submarines. It doesn't carry nuclear weapons, however. Your cruisers are very useful, especially when you get anti-satellite missiles. Uh, they have very good firepower. They can carry tactical nuclear missiles, so like tactical cruise missiles. They can carry strong air defenses. They can carry anti-satellite missiles. Uh, they don't actually have anti-air defenses, apparently, in the game, and they are vulnerable to submarines. Uh, we also have fighters, bombers, and attack bombers. Um, attack bombers are harder to intercept than, than nuclear bombers. They can also carry nuclear weapons, uh, but they're not as good in aerial fights as fighters. Fighters are obviously great against enemy aircraft, high speed, high maneuverability. They can carry air-launched ballistic missiles, but they can't carry like nuclear bombs. And then you have your strategic bombers as well. You also have missiles or your nuclear technology down here. So we have unlocked a megaton bomb so we can produce megaton bombs or nuclear bombs. I'm going to hold off on producing bombs right now. Uh, I'm mainly going to focus on building some new radars. So I'm going to go ahead and line three radar. Well, let's make it four radar sites because when I get these SAMs, I want to make sure that we have uh, a, a, good, uh, a good SAM network or good radar network to, to, fil to filter our SAMs into. Uh, and then we'll put one one airbase sort of down the line here. So you can see it's going to take a long time for those items to get produced. But you can see the bottom item starts... Oh, wait. Enemy radar sites detected. So I just unpaused the game here. We detected a destroyer in South America. You can see here on the west coast, the enemy carriers are on the west coast. Uh, and then we also detected enemy radars here in Russia as our radar sites overlap theirs and theirs ours. Um, but we'll go ahead and unpause again. So you can see the enemies are actually attacking my uh, 
shit. Well, they just destroyed my radar site. So just like that, we're already fighting the enemy. No, I don't... You should be able to fly your aircraft over the... Uh, there's a speed counter down here, by the way. These little squares represent what speed you select. Alright, so we're going to fly our aircraft up against the enemy vessels. You can see they're engaging the enemy, so our, I had it set to pretty fast. But you can see our attack bombers are going after the enemy destroyers here. Enemy fighters are intercepting our attack bombers there, and you can see our own fighters are going to rise up to, to fight them. We've got a bit of a dogfight going on here. So we'll slow it down a little bit so we can kind of watch it. We detected more enemy ships. I'm not sure if we actually destroyed the enemy destroyer or not. You get these little pop-ups up here. You can basically turn it off by going to nuclear war mode because you're going to get so many notifications that you can't really... You can't really... Honestly, like, with this engagement, I should probably just turn it off. I'm just turning those notifications off, essentially. Now, I'm probably going to get hit pretty hard. I'm probably going to lose this battle because my surface vessels can't really participate. And so you can see here I'm down, I think, to three fighters and eight attack bombers. But the problem is if I don't destroy these enemy aircraft, these enemy ships off my west coast, then I'm going to have a real tough time of it when it comes to putting more radar coverage over Central America because those those naval vessels, I believe they can just bombard me uh, from the shore. I think that's how they destroyed my, my radar site is not with air units, but actually with uh, with their gunfire. So again, you're you're basically at war right away. It's just a matter of how quickly the nuclear conflict escalates. Now, the interesting thing is with the enemy's decision to base its surface vessels off the west coast, since we all start with the same thing, I'm imagining his cities in here in Central America and uh, the Caribbean are pretty vulnerable. I'm also not sure, do destroyers have surface air missiles? I don't know that they do. So they may actually get a leg up on my carriers as well. We'll go ahead and replenish our aircraft. Do I have one cruiser, or are they all destroyers? I can't remember. They're all destroyers. They have surface-to-surface -surface missiles and torpedoes, but they don't have any anti-aircraft. So we have seven attack aircraft still. Not really much in the way of fighters. So we're going to go ahead and uh, shift these fighters to the top of our queue. How do I do that again? So it's going to go to the top of our build queue to try and speed things up. Meanwhile, my SAMs are three minutes away. Maybe I should like switch my, my priorities here a little bit. Because you can see if I switch over to 70% construction, I immediately get those, those aircraft going right away. So you can see I just purchased a new fighter, which just took off and engaged the enemy aircraft, since I don't really have any air defenses at the moment for my carrier. But I'm going to get defeated in detail real fast here. I just sent my attack bombers off at that enemy carrier, mainly to try and keep the enemy off my... Carrier. Meanwhile, I, did, I am closing the range with my destroyers a bit so they can engage with the enemies, but this is, this is a losing battle. I'm not going to deploy my radars until I get SAMs or until I get better, uh, more air bases in the south maybe to engage the enemy aircraft. Yeah, my navy's doomed. I'm 
Maybe my two destroyers can, can knock out one of their surface vessels before it's too late. The one positive thing is I'm guessing he's been replenishing his own aircraft, so maybe I've sort of d diverted some of his construction priorities as well. His or her, whatever the AI is, I don't know. Alright, so that ship sunk. So let's go back and... I don't know if I... I feel like given their, their ships off my coast, I should build some defenses here. So I don't like focusing more on construction, especially early game, than research. But maybe it's a good idea until I get an airfield or some, some aircraft uh, built up. And so we can... Because my airfield's in the north. My only... My only aircraft, or my only airfield is, is up here with its 15 fighters. I should probably put like an airfield down here and then maybe again work on getting those SAMs researched. The SAM research is almost complete, so we can actually queue up the next thing we want to research, which I think is going to be space radar. And then over the horizon radar will be queued up beyond that so we can make sure we've got defenses against enemy uh, anti-ballistic missile or any enemy ballistic missiles. I'm also going to go ahead and start producing some SAMs, so a whole bunch of them too. And I'm going to move those to the top of the queue so we can defend ourselves from these enemy aircraft. Now we do need good radar networks to defend ourselves, and we also probably need to get one of those airfields built so we can attack the enemy shipping. Because our, our SAMs won't destroy... Well, they might destroy enemy surface-to-surface -surface missiles from the destroyers. Destroyed. What was destroyed? Oh shit. The Russian carrier fleet is attacking my my airfield in the north in Alaska. God damn it. Okay, well I guess if it's gonna auto deploy my crap, then I might as well start putting radar sites on my east coast at least. Somewhere where they're not in danger. Cause it will auto deploy your the items you build if you don't deploy it. So I'm going to build a radar network on my east coast. That should give me pretty good coverage up the U.S. east coast here. And then I guess I'll build some SAMs in that area as well. Going to try and overlap these SAM coverage boxes here. Make sure that our east coast has good SAM coverage. If we go over to our radar here, we can see uh, our SAM range here. So the east, the east coast is getting defended here from enemy aircraft. Production complete. We'll put an airfield here in Florida. We need more production. So let's build some more units there. Meanwhile, we've finished the space radar. What is it again? I need to do that. Alright, so I'm going to build a bunch of space radars as well. This will give us uh, detection of, I think, enemy satellites. So we'll put these a little bit inland, just so they're not quite as vulnerable. They're still within our SAM coverage, though. Or within our radar coverage, anyway. I need to slow things down. All right, I really need to switch the focus back to research. Over the horizon radar, which will, will be next, which I believe is how you detect incoming missiles. So after we develop over the horizon radar, I think we want early warning systems. And then after early warning systems, I think what we'll want is anti-ballistic missile technology for our SAMs. So where were those? And then after... Oh, actually, it just lets me queue up one, huh? And then we'll do, we'll do early warning systems then. All right, another space radar here. I think I might be overkilling it with the space radar. Not sure I quite need that much. So we'll build one more, which will move up here north of, like, Calgary and Winnipeg. And that should give us a nice space radar coverage over pretty much the entire U.S., so we should be able to detect if enemy satellites are heading over us. And I think that's all the space radars we'll need. Okay. 
Okay. Alright, we'll replenish those fighters. So we lost a bunch of fighters in our base in the north, but they didn't actually destroy our base up there. So that's good. Okay, I'm going to move my radar coverage south now. I think I need another airfield. It looks like we've got one in queue. All right, so early warning next. Then we'll go to ABMs to make my SAMs better. That'll be good against, like, MRBMs. Probably not effective against uh, ICBMs yet, but it'll at least be able to defend against, like, medium-range ballistic missiles. Let's cut down on some of the build items for the moment. Research complete. And then let's go with, we just got the over the horizon radar. So I think we need at least two of those. And then an airfield and then some SAMs. I feel like what I've seen a lot of people do is going really heavy on the, on the SAM production. I'm not, again, building the radars in Central America because the enemy carriers are just going to hit us there. I'm also not going to try and replace my carrier. I don't find it terribly useful. Also, it looks like the airfield comes with a radar set based off what I can see here. It's got a blue circle around it. built an attack bomber to replenish my carrier, but with the loss of the carrier, I don't have anywhere to deploy the attack bomber. Alright, so we're replenishing our bombers here in this northern airbase. We must have destroyed... or we didn't destroy the radar, we just lost our radar coverage over that, that enemy radar. And so we don't have a lot of intelligence. I think there is a way you can see some intelligence... Yeah, down here it tells us that uh, the Russians, are, I think, are building air bases. The East Asians are building destroyers. You could have intelligence on enemy research as well. We don't have any of that yet. All right, so we're going to develop ABMs. And then I think the next thing we're going to develop is probably advanced aircraft, which will make my fighters better. Or maybe we should go with better bombs. Maybe we should go with, like, MRBMs. I don't know who carries cruise missiles. Oh, that's for your shipping? SSMs? Uh, I'd rather go with MRBMs. They're not super great. But I think they're useful. I mean, and I, need, I need another strike package for my nukes. My bombers are too slow. My attack bombers, I don't have any because I lost my carriers. Research complete. Let's go with advanced aircraft, actually. Air wings replenished. Especially with this early war period where, where we need to make sure that we're, you know, where our, where our land-based aircraft are probably more important to defending ourselves against enemy attacks. I think having better aircraft is important. Shit. Our, uh, our air wings in, in Alaska are at it again against this enemy. Holy hell, that's a lot of fucking aircraft. Well, there goes the airfield. Is that even the Russians? Are the Russians green? Or is that the Europeans? Did they come over the top? Goddamn Europeans. They came over the top and are coming through the... Is this the Bering Strait? No ice bat, I guess, up there. This is obviously not real. I'm assuming this timer is real time if you're on the slowest speed. I like playing on times two speed. It's a little bit slow early game, but it's also kind of, you know, ridiculous. If I speed it up to three, it's kind of ridiculously fast. I guess at the moment it's okay as we're just waiting on stuff building. Building. 
You can see here we're researching two over-the-horizon radars. I really have no defenses, though, other than my SAMs on the East Coast. We did research ABM technologies, so my SAMs do have ABMs. I don't know if they're any good against ICBMs. Looks more like a 50 caliber bullet than it does an ABM. Um, but they should be good against, like, submarine-launched ballistic missiles. It was kind of funny when we were playing online with uh, with Wolfpack and Finnish and Tortuga. Finnish was uh, sort of the East, or is it West Asia? Uh, and he just had literally like 40 SAMs all along the border with Russia, uh, with uh, East Asia, and uh, with Europe. We actually didn't have a Europe player, but... Intelligence, airbase revealed near Kharkov. He just built an absurd amount of SAMs. I think he ended up getting second place, so... I haven't watched a whole lot of videos of like other people playing this to see like what is the right strategy or anything like that. Research complete. I'm not sure. We'll put this hopefully covered by Sam's. Does it give me an indicator of If I turn these radar, these. Where do I see my early warning? Those are space radars. I don't know, I can't really tell what the, where the, what does this do again? Over the horizon radar, or OTH, is a type of radar system with the ability to detect targets at very long ranges beyond the radar horizon, which is the distance limit for ordinary radar. The primary role for these is to detect incoming missiles long before they reach your territory, so your missile defense has time to intercept them. Extremely long range missile detection precisely calculates the launch source, only detects ballistic missiles. Okay. So, what is. Am I just not. Oh, it's way over here. It's almost into enemy territory. Okay. Yeah, so if I put this in, like, Canada, I'll be able to see everything that would launch from Russia and Europe. So we'll do that. i put it a little further south again, just in case the Europeans try and come in and target me. Oh, our research is done. So what should we research now? I think advanced ABMs, probably. Well, that's going to take a long time. Um... Let's go with MRBMs, maybe? I don't know, maybe... I don't even know. Like, I'm, I should be going way slower. I'm losing research time right now. Um, the first experience with short-range radar showed a significant energy, decreased the energy consumption, and compact design allows for making mobile radar systems. Sealed military reports contain the term radio locating maneuver. Uh, I guess this would make my, my radar sites better. So we'll we'll do a radar focus now. I just don't there's there's going to be a lot of strategy and nuances to this game in terms of how you research, how you deploy, what the what's the right strategy um and I'm I'm not obviously there yet. This is all sort of very much like a first look, a first impression, not quite sure what uh, what we should be doing. Uh but it it's I think it's a fun look in any event. At least for me. I'm having a good time. Hope you guys are too. <laughs> Although right now it's mostly just sort of waiting on timers to count down. Alright, so the improved SW radar is done. Research complete. So if we do... It doesn't even... Huh. I don't know, some of these tickers are hard to figure out. I probably should get, like, advanced SAMs. Well, I guess we have ABMs, but... Oops. Research complete. Alright. We got another airfield. I'm going to deploy that over here. 
Again, with the eventual goal of going after the enemy uh, enemy surface vessels if they're still hanging out on our west coast. So I'm going to keep ticking these ra these these SAM sites sort of along our borders as I build more of them. Again, the fact that they have some ABM tech as well should be helpful. Research complete. All right, so research to advance air-to-air -air missiles. I'm not really big into mobile SAMs. Um, do my bombers have the ability to launch cruise missiles? It changes SSMs into cruise into cruise missiles. Uh, what do my bombers have the? What are they? I think they just drop bombs. I don't. Oh shit. They have conventional bombs, nuclear, and megaton Production bombs. Complete. Hmm. So I don't really have a use for that. AWACS can be useful. Silent engines improve your torpedoes, I guess, and your SSBNs. Let's do that, actually. Let's do... Let's do MRBMs because it'll allow us to unlock SSBMs, or SSBNs. Right, we'll move these SAMs up. The coast. I really need to build, like, radar nets along the north as well. Airfields take forever to build, by the way. My bombers apparently upgraded to B1 bombers by the looks of it. And they they have fifty they carry fifty bombs? Is that is that true? Huh. Okay. So we'll keep going here. We'll probably be ramping this video up here in a few minutes. I know this is a little bit of tedium of getting things set up, but uh we'll be we'll be sort of having this series continue in another video. Okay, so again, trying to get radar coverage along our entire border. This radar strategy might be better for a different country. Like, if we were Europe, putting radars along the Russian border would be really smart, I think. Uh, and then probably along the Mediterranean as well. You could probably avoid putting a whole lot of... Like, the the North America... The, the different countries are probably going to have very different strategies because the borders of North America are huge when you compare with, like, the borders of Europe, which are much smaller uh, or, or just different differently laid out borders um i think you know the the radar ranges like in in east asia i mean this just covers so much more relative to the u.s so i i wonder if if we're not doing this right i'm also not necessarily pushing to the max i probably could be more efficient in my radar placement i'm moving these sams further north um primarily because i assume if we get in a war with the russians we're going to need SAMs along our northern border uh, to sort of provide over-the-top coverage of enemy uh, ICBMs that might come over the horizon, you know, over the poles. So we should be, our east coast should be relatively secure from boomers, assuming we have the right amount of tech to defend against submarine-launched ballistic missiles. Okay. Research complete. All right, research complete there. We're going to research... I think we're going to research a missile vehicle because we can't do anything with MRBMs without a missile vehicle. MRBMs have to be launched from a missile vehicle. Then we'll look into researching subs or ICBMs. I'm more of a defensive player. I probably should should think a little more offensive minded in this game because you can build nuclear strike plans which sort of automate your strike packages against the enemy what's the next technology we're going to do after this I think we'll do
I'm not going to move my SAMs around. Although you need mobile SAMs to get advanced SAMs. Advanced I I ABMs would be probably a smart thing. They even have hypersonic Thanks, missiles in here. All right, let's go with an SSBN, I think. It's on a different tree than ICBMs. Actually, let's go with ICBMs, sorry. Once we do ICBMs, then we're going to do satellites so we can know where to strike. Meanwhile, airfield's taking for flipping ever. Pacific is researching ABMs right now. Europe is researching SAMs? That feels like they're behind the ball if that's only what they're researching now. Although, I've noticed at least in the AI game, or in the, the multiplayer game we had going, uh, that that research is not always accurate. It can be can be flawed or inaccurate. My air bases are mainly going to be based in the south because our air attacks will probably be limited to South America or in Alaska against Russia. Nobody has nuked anybody yet. The scores over here on the right all represent zero, which means there have been no nuclear strikes yet. I think once this airbase is complete, we're going to build maybe five more SAMs. Oh, shoot. I think once the airbase is complete and placed, we'll wrap this video up and then we'll pick things up next time. And I imagine in our next video we'll we'll get to nuking or being nuked or whatnot. Although I, I, I kind of imagine in our game, I think we, you know, some of our players in our multiplayer game struck a little bit early before we were really ready. I imagine once the AI, you know, once the cat's out of the bag with the AI, they'll probably strike hard and fast with everything. Okay, we'll move these SAMs further south to protect our air bases down here. I'm imagining two airfields should be enough to deal with an enemy fleet, at least to knock out their fighters. All right, the ICBM tech is almost done. Research complete. We may be in conflict with them very soon. once I place this next SAM site, so we'll hold off on that in a sack for a sec. I did say I was going to wrap the video up after placing that airbase. My CBMs take a long time to build. Let's place these radar sites in the, or these same sites in the north. These same sites also provide ABM coverage, which is why primarily I'm putting them in the north here to destroy enemy incoming ICBMs that might come over the poles. going heavy defensive in, in our focus and heavy research still at this point in the game. So a big part of our interior is still exposed if they come over west of the Hudson Bay. Although we're narrowing that gap down. Place this one. Huh. Complete. All right, we'll put one on this island, and then we should be good there. Meanwhile, research is done. 
So we're going to research. I think we're going to research SSBNs because I'll probably build a few of those as well. I really need an airfield in the north if I'm going to build these SAMs across the whole way because of the European ships off Alaska. But yeah, we've been going for over 45 minutes, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. Leave your thoughts down below, as always. And, and uh, until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, the game we've been playing today is ICBM, a new game in development by the folks over at Matrix and Slytherin, uh, a game about global th thermonuclear war and a very competitive one at that. It's very much uh, intended sort of uh, in terms of the competitive gaming type scene. This is a game based on my multiplayer experience that very much has the potential to destroy friendships in, a, in kind of a risk sort of a way. So it's, uh, I think it's a really promising looking game. Uh, we've just been getting started here today. This was, again, sort of a first look, first impressions type deal. If you do watch this video today on the 11th of October, you can download this demo and play it yourself as well. Uh, up and, oh shit. We're being bombarded by something beyond the horizon. They just destroyed our SAM here. There was some shipping off the, uh, off the east coast here. Um, but you can, I'm sorry, where was I? <laughs> you can uh, get this game yourself on Steam right now uh, and, uh, and enjoy it. So let me know your thoughts below. Let me know if this is something you're intrigued by, if you'd like to see more of. Uh, and until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out. What should we do next? What should our next research be before we go? I don't really care about the ICBM vehicles. I'm fine having stationary silos. Heavy rockets let us carry MIRVs. Um, we have research satellites, so maybe advanced optics? Silent engines is good for SSBNs. Powerful engines is more about shipping. Um, ASATs, you know, it's going to take a while, but I think advanced ABMs are going to be important when, when things start flying here. Okay. Let's build a little bit more dense SAM coverage also just to make sure that the enemy is like triple, you know, I need to start building overlapping fields of cover for my SAMs. Again, going super defensive in nature here. But in any event, guys, I said it a little while ago. So thanks again for watching. Until next time, I'm out.